Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start this lecture 34 and we will be today discussing about uh, turbo fan engine and uh, we will carry out a cycle, real cycle analysis. But before that we will take a, an example in turbo jet engine. If you recall, we really looked at in the last lecture how to incorporate the losses while carrying out uh, a real cycle analysis. Right. That means, we have already uh, discussed how to really look at incorporate those losses in the ideal cycle of a turbojet engine and then uh, we also had carried out a parametric analysis for a very limited case. I had taken only the one Mach number 0 0.8 and then looked at that how this uh, specific thrust will be uh, different for a real cycle. And if you recall that we are getting the what you call uh, higher specific thrust for case of real engine for the same pressure ratio and same turbine lay temperature, same magnum, everything remaining same. right? But whereas, the TSFC, we are having higher values in case of real cycle as compared to the ideal. And we looked at other efficiencies, we found that it is basically decreasing, particularly the overall efficiency, whereas the propulsive efficiency, uh, you know, uh, will have a higher uh, efficiency as compared to ideal one. So, we will now take an example of a turbo jet engine and uh, which is flying at a flight Mach number of 0.8 and an altitude of 15 kilometer. Uh, and the pressure ratio across the compressor with the polytropic efficiency of 0.85 or 85 percent, right. And uh, the pressure ratio is 12 and turbine has a polytropic efficiency 88. Keep in mind that always turbine is, you know, having higher polytropic efficiency than the compression, right. And uh, that is, uh, it can be clear in this example. And at the combustion chamber exit, the temperature is restricted to 1600 Kelvin and the burner has a efficiency of 98 percent and total pressure ratio of 0.95. In ideal case, it is 1, but in this case, it is 0.95. A conversion nozzle with an isentropic efficiency of 95 percent is used to produce thrust. And the mechanical efficiency of this engine is assumed to be 98 percent. And if the total pressure recovery factor in air intake is 0 0.91, we need to estimate the thrust produced by the engine if it consumes 50 kg per second of air. And beside this, we can determine the specific thrust, thrust specific fuel consumption, propulsive efficiency, and thermal efficiency. Of course, the heat of combustion is given, and so also, also usually we will be using CP of air as 1.005 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and C p of the gas will be using 1.148 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. And uh, keep in mind that this C p will be using till the end of compressor and C p z will be using from the uh, inlet of combustor to the nozzle. And this is for our calculation, but when you use a computer program, you can use a you know uh, CP varying in each component, right? It can be incorporated very easily, but in hand calculation, it will be quite cumbersome. So we will be restricting to these two values of CP and gamma. Gamma, if you look at 1.4, and gamma G, that is uh, you know hot portions, uh, hot uh, hotter components, will be using the 1.33. So, and uh, I would insist that uh, before really you carry out any analysis or any calculation, 
you should keep this uh, you know T s or the P v diagram in mind or I would urge you to draw that for your own clarity, because the station numbers and other things will be in you know properly used, otherwise you will be getting confused. So, if you look at here the T s diagram I have just shown and is 0 station 0 to 2 is nothing but your air intake and 2 to 3 is your compressor and station 3 to 4 is your combustion chamber and then 4 to 5 your expansion in the turbine. It can be considered both low pressure turbine and high pressure turbine and 5 to 9 is your the nozzle. right? So, and we can get the specific thrust uh, you know in the format like which is equal to 1 plus f v 9 minus v naught plus a 9 by m naught right and uh, and multiplied by p 9 minus p naught in the bracket right. So, if you look at uh, here of course, we need to find out this v 9 we need to we know actually v naught because m naught is given right altitude is given you can find out we will in a moment we will do that. And we uh, know the p naught this is known right, it is known, but uh, p 9 is not known and a 9 is not known cross sectional area of the nozzle at the you know nozzle exit is not given and m naught dot is not given mass flow rate how much is entering you really do not know right. So, how to go about it? Of course, the f you can find out you know already how to evaluate f right and uh, because in ideal cycle it will be similar it, if not same and v 9 we can evaluate right. So, let us uh, look at how we will go about it the v naught is very easy to determine that is nothing but a naught which is root over gamma r t naught and m naught m naught is given to you and uh, t naught is from your altitude you will get gamma is 1.4287 is your specific gas constant, you will get you know and Mach number is 0 0.8, you will get 236.06 meter per second right. So, the nozzle exit velocity is to be determined and we will go as usual like you know V 9 is root over 2 C P T T 5 minus T T 9 right. If you look at this diagram T T 5 uh, you know is to be determined, but T T 4 is known right. Can we really get this from this data, because T T 4 is given as 1600 Kelvin am I right. Can you look at your this thing, it is given as 1600. Can I get uh, without really uh, looking at each point what will be pressure and temperature, is it possible, yes or no, certainly no, because it is the tau T is not given if it is tau t is given you can get directly. So, there we need to go through each uh, you know uh, station number or component inlet and exit and find out pressure and temperature right. And then we can get because particularly if I want to know this T T 4 then I will have to balance this work done by the turbine right which will be consumed by the compressor in case of turbojet. So, that we need to look at it and uh, here uh, we will be doing all those things calculate uh, you know start from the uh, station 0 onwards and see how we will go. It is the usual procedure what we had followed for an ideal cycle, but we will be incorporating various values of the efficiencies pressure losses as we go along right. So, let us look at intake air intake total pressure and temperature at the station 2 can be evaluated as T T 2 is equal to T T naught is equal to T naught 1 plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 m naught square. We you put this values of gamma 1.4 m naught is 0 0.8 T naught is given you will get 244.43 Kelvin right, which is same as that of an ideal cycle. Let us evaluate the pressure ratio which is even for the isentropic one can think of right. And like uh, if you look at uh, this is P 
P T naught by P naught is equal to T T naught by T naught gamma a gamma minus 1. So, you can get 1.52, right. And getting this thing P T 2 is equal to P T 2 divided P naught into P naught, you will get these values, right. But keep in mind that this will be basically P T naught kind of thing. This is basically P T naught, right. This would not be right. So, P T P R F will be 0 0.9, right. P R F is nothing but your P T 2 by P T naught, right. So, this P T 2 is nothing but P F R into P T naught, right. That will give me 15.53. Is that clear? So, the compressor, the total pressure across the compressor is given by P T 3 by P T 2 is 12. So, P T 3 is equal to P T 3 by P T 2 into P T 2. So, we already we know this thing, we know this ratio, we can directly get that values of P T 3. So, using polytropy efficiency and the compressor, we can evaluate the temperature ratio, right. The temperature ratio, we know P T 3 by P T 2. So, we know this uh, polytropy efficiency gamma is 1.4. So, you will get this ratio 2.305, right. And uh, when you multiply it by this T T 2 with the this temperature ratio across the compressor, you will get as a temperature at the exit of compressor that is T T 3 is equal to 563.53 Kelvin. What we will have to do now, basically we will have to carry out an energy balance across the combustor and because we need to find out the fuel ratio, that means air fuel or fuel air ratio, right. So, this is basically fuel air ratio, right, F is equal to C P Z T T 4 minus C P A T T 3, right, and eta B delta S C minus C P Z T T 4. So, if you look at this is basically if I look at that, you know it is only eta b is coming into picture, otherwise it is similar to that of an ideal cycle, right. All those values we know and then we will find out this is a quite a very low value that is fuel a ratio, right. So, then we can determine what will be the f because we know air flow rate, air flow rate entering into the engine is 50 kg per second. So, the mass flow rate of fuel will be 1.575 kg per second. So, a turbine you know we need to look at it because we need to find out T T 4 and for that we will have to find out P T 4. So, and P T 4 is not same as the P T 3 because there will be losses in your combustors, right. So, then we can find out the P T 4 is equal to pi b into P T 3. So, that is basically 177.11 kilo Pascal. In ideal cycle, it could have been same as that of P T 3, that is 186.43 kilo Pascal, right. So, there is a difference now because of losses incurred in the combustion chamber. So, the total temperature at the exit turbine is to be evaluated, right. For that, we must, you know, what you call, know how much power is given to run the compressor. For that, we will learn that W dot T is equal to eta m into W dot C, right. In ideal cycle, eta m is equal to 1, but in this case, it is having some values of, I think, 0.98, right. So, if you look at, uh, I, if I write down this turbine, uh, this will be, this is uh, you know eta m over here into turbine, right, because not all the work from the turbine will go to and 0.98, of course, if it is eta m is 0.98, it will go, right. m dot a c p a t t 3 minus t 2 t is equal to eta m, m dot a plus m dot f c p z T T 4 minus T T 4. So, from this expression, we can get a relationship between T T 5, which is equal to T T 4 minus C P A divided by C P Z 1 over eta m 1 plus f T 
t 3 minus t 2. So, we know all these values right and we can determine that happens to be you know 13 1 3 2 3 point 7 right. If you look at the differences you know around something 273 77 Kelvin difference is there right. So, the total pressure we need to determine and we can find out because we know this T T 5 now and T T 4 is known. So, by using the relationship of course, for the non isentropic case even like because we are using the eta P T that is polytropic efficiency for turbine the P T 5 by P T 4 is uh, the you know can be related to temperature ratio across the turbine power to the gamma g divided by gamma g minus 1 eta. So, you can multiply these values keep in mind we are using 1.33 instead of 1.4 for air I am like you know what this is. So, that happens to be 0 0.422. So, P T 5 we can determine very easily because P T 4 is known and this is already known. So, we can get that and for the nozzle you know we need to determine whether the nozzle is choked or not right. And if you look at we are basically considering as, as to be a conversion nozzle right and for that we need to determine the critical pressure ratio across the nozzle right. So, what we will do? We will have to you know look at this expression which we had derived in the last lecture P T 5 divided by P C is equal to 1 over in the bracket 1 minus 1 over eta n in the bracket gamma z minus 1 divided by gamma z minus 1. Then all the whole bracket power to the gamma z divided by gamma z minus 1. So, if you look at if I will put this thing this is happens to be 1.914 right. Of course, it may vary little bit depending on the efficiency of the nozzle right. Generally efficiency of the nozzle is uh, quite high right because of the accelerating flow. So, the losses and other things will be not much, but however, if there is a suck formations over expansion under expansion I am mean like you know kind of things or there is a separation right uh, due to uh, you know other attachments then or it is a kind of a thrust vectoring kind of things when you are doing. So, this kind of happen then eta n will be different. So, if you look at otherwise mostly it will be around 1.914 right these values provided eta n is 0 0.95 right. So, but uh, actual pressure ratio across the nozzle with respect to ambient pressure what it would be that we need to determine that is P T 5 by P naught is P T 5 well do you know P naught is given. So, we will find this 6.67 that means is it nozzle is choked or it is not choked. It is much higher P T 5 by P naught is higher than the P T 5 by P C. So, therefore, nozzle is choked right. So, the static temperature of the nozzle you know exit T 9 becomes basically T c that is the critical temperature right that is 2 by gamma g power to T T 5. So, you will get that it is 11.34.7 Kelvin. How can you change this when the nozzle is choked right if it is choked you cannot really change your mass flow rate mass flow rate remain constant right. But how can you change that if you want to have suppose a pilot wants to change that how you will do that. There is no throat, this is a conversion nozzle. So, you will have to basically change the exit area or you will increase the upstream pressure, right. I, I can change the pressure and then do that, right. Then only I can allow the more mass flow to go, otherwise, I cannot, right. Of course, there is a several implications. Suppose it is choked and you are trying to push mass flow rate. So, what will happen? So, there is several implication of it. So, let me not get into, 
that. So, now the static pressure at the nozzle exit pressure 9 becomes P 9 is equal to P c and P c by P t 5 into P t 5 will get 38.9 kilo Pascal, whereas your P naught was much lower value, right. So, the using this equation of state, you can find out the density rho 9 is equal to P 9 R T 9. Keep in mind, P 9 is same as the P c, is not P 9 is not same as the P naught, okay as we are done in the ideal cycle. So, we can evaluate this V 9, which is nothing but root over gamma g R T c, it is independent of the upstream, right, because the Mach number is equal to 1, right. So, you can you know that what is the speed of sound, right. So, you can write down very easily root over gamma R T c, you need not to that expression what I wrote in the beginning, okay, that you should keep in mind which happens to be 658.87 meter per second. So, now we need to evaluate A 9 by M naught, right. A 9 by M naught, if you look at nothing but your rho 9 V 9, V 9 you know, rho 9 you know, because you know pressure, you know the temperature, ideal gas law you can use, right, you can get that values, which is happens to be 0 0.0127 meter square second per kg, right. Okay. So, even though you do not know the M 9, A 9 and M naught, right, you can get because you can evaluate the V 9 and the rho 9, right. That we did not discuss when we are discussing the real cycle analysis, particularly carrying out a parametric studies, right. And here, but while solving problem, we need to understand this is from simply uh, you know mass conservation equation. So, then we can get T s is equal to 1 plus f, f already we have evaluated into uh, V 9 we have evaluated minus V naught plus A 9 by M naught, this portion we have already evaluated P 9 by P naught, substitute those values, you will get 795.77 7 Newton second per kg, right. You just substitute these values you will get, right. Keep in mind that when you are doing this, you need to be you know careful about the pressure, because it will be an SI unit that is in kilo Pascal, right. So, therefore, you will have to otherwise you will incur you know blunder or error in that. So, in order to estimate TSFC, we can evaluate fuel air ratio, you know already we have done that TSFC is equal to F divided by specific thrust. So, it happens to be 39.61 milligram Newton per second. If you look at this is in SI unit, so for milligram you will have to convert, okay. it will be very small, you will have to multiply it by 1000. So, the propulsive efficiencies you will get, which is you know in terms of specific thrust into the flight velocity divided by this portion in the denom denominator and you when you substitute these values, you will get 95.82 percentage, right. And similarly, thermal efficiency you will find for this example, that is which happens to be 1 plus, uh, you know 14.46, because all those quantities we know. So, we can substitute those values and we can get. Now, what we will do, we will basically look at the turbo fan engine. And we will not really carry out the same what we did, but salient features we will be looking at. And most of them will be similar to the turbo jet or the turbo fan, which we had carried out for ideal and even the real cycle in case of turbo jet. So, this is a schematic, which we have already seen, but let us look at it again. It is having an air intake that is the from station 0 to 2 and 2 to 13 is your fan and 13 to 19 is your fan nozzle, right. And what to call basically if you look at 2 to 3 itself will be compressor for the core engine. The pressure ratio of the across the compressor into multiplied by fan ratio will give you pressure ratio due to compression, right. And 3 to 4 is your combustion chamber and 4 to 5 is your turbine and of course, 5 to 9 is your nozzle, right. 
basically it is 7 to 9, but uh, this is a tail pipe which we need not to worry about, nothing is happening here. So, the processes as uh, you know in the T s diagram, it is uh, the this is for the core engine, the left hand side figure that is 0 to 2 is your what you call compression in the air intake, 2 to 3 is your compression in com, uh, compressor and 3 to 4 is heat addition and 4 to 5 is your expansion in the turbine and 5 to 9 is your expansion in the nozzle. Keep in mind that for the fan, it is similar one that is basically compression in the air intake and the fan, this is basically fan portion station 2 to 13 and expansion you know in the nozzle that is 13 to the 9. So, the total thrust will be consist of two thrust, one is primary stream thrust, other is secondary stream thrust right. So, one can think about you know that thrust will basically total thrust will be m dot c v 9 by minus a naught. Keep in mind that this is your primary you know thrust and contributed due to momentum and is having a pressure term that is a 9 p 9 minus p 9. Similarly, this is this portion is for the fan right that is m dot f v 19 minus v naught is for uh, contributed due to momentum change in the uh, no, nozzle uh, expansion due to nozzle and uh, the a 19 p 19 minus p naught is basically due to the pressure thrust okay, in the fan due to expansion in the nozzle fan nozzle basically. So, <coughs> the total specific thrust you can you know express in terms of alpha, alpha is nothing but your bypass ratio which we have already uh, defined right and uh, 1 plus f v 9 divided by a naught minus m naught, m naught is basically Mach number, flight Mach number. And similarly, in the case of this is your what you call pressure thrust right in core engine right. And similarly, for the fan, so this is for the fan engine and uh, this portion is your momentum thrust and this portion is your pressure thrust in the case of fan pressure thrust right. And of course, if when alpha is 0, then it is nothing but your turbo jet engine right, when alpha is equal to 0. Because when alpha is 0, this term the these terms will just go away. So, we will just uh, look at by carrying out a similar analysis, we can get an expression for V 19 right, which looks to be quite uh, big, but I have just put it so that you can see it, but you can we have already learned how to get this kind of thing. It is having various term like pi n, pi t, pi v, pi c, pi d, pi r, of course, p naught by p 9 right and uh, this uh, you know you can uh, if it is choked then it will be different value that will be pc by p9 right and if it is not choked then it will be p0 is equal to p9 that means p0 by p9 will be 1 right so that is the conditions and of course if it is a uh, generally conversion diversion nozzle is not being used in case of turbojet engine but turbo no, sorry, turbo fan engines it is not being used, uh, generally conversion being used. So, either it will be choked or it will be unchoked kind of thing. But in case of a turbo jet engine, this P naught by P 9 you know uh, will be given provided there is a conversion nozzle or it has to be estimated from some amount, right. Whether it is over expanded or under expanded, it will be different values, right. So, Similarly, we can get a similar expression for V 19 by A naught and which if you look at it is having another parameter that is phi f and similarly tau f right apart from because the fan pressure ratio and then fan temperature ratio has to be given. 
So, by carrying out energy balance between the turbine, compressor and fan, you can get this expression tau t, which is you know equal to 1 minus 1 over eta m 1 plus f tau r divided by tau lambda into tau c minus 1 plus alpha tau f minus 1. If you look at uh, again similar thing when alpha is 0, right? when alpha is equal to 0, then you know turbo jet engine. So, this term will go away. So, it is same as that of turbojet what we had derived earlier. So, the eta m is the mechanical efficiency, the expression for fuel air ratio will be same as that of the turbojet engine. There is nothing much change because uh, you are adding fuel in the core engine alone, but there might be turbofan engine where you can you know add some fuel. It can be possible, but generally it is not being used. I can have a combustor in the fan strip and do that you can imagine it can be done, but generally people have not tried out that till now to my knowledge, the best of my knowledge, right. But uh, hence the relationship T s f c can be estimated very in the similar way f by 1 plus alpha T s. There is not, not much difference between this, there is no difference as, at all between this expression and the ideal cycle analysis, there is no difference. Similarly, f there is a difference, but only b eta b, right. Expression propulsive and thermal efficiency will be similar in nature for the ideal cycle, right? Because we are using the same expression, so so also thermal efficiency. So overall efficiency is the multiplication of the propulsive efficiency and thermal efficiency. So armed with this, you know, relationship, one can carry out parametric analysis. Keep in mind that uh, there are several parameters one can think of because we know all those things. We have uh, carried out a parametric analysis for a turbofan engine uh, by considering alpha that is a bypass ratio changing from you know various values to the 5, 0 0.2, 0 .1, then 1. And the, the similarly, fan pressure ratio can be changed. Similarly, your flight Mach number, altitude and fan pressure uh, sorry uh, the pressure ratio across the compressor can be varied. So, if you look at more number of parameters, which can be varied and then you can play around look at what you can get out of it, right. So, but however, we will carry out certain you know uh, parametric analysis by considering the flight Mach number as 0.85, altitude as 12, you know 12 kilometers for real turbo uh, fan engine and T T 4 we are considering as 16. 100 Kelvin and fan pressure ratio 2, right. And we are varying here the bypass ratio from 0 0.5 and then 2 and 5, 3 bypass ratio we have considered, but you can vary. If you write a program, just you know give the values, it can calculate for you, you can see. Now, here what I have plotted is the specific thrust versus the pressure ratio across the compression. If you look at that this dashed line you know is uh, the ideal one. If I look at for the alpha is equal to 0.5, the specific thrust uh, you know increases with the pressure ratio and then reaches a maximum value and then it decreases. And you will get the similar one for the real cycle analysis, only thing it uh, you know attains a maximum value is uh, much before than the ideal one, that is one difference. The, but most glaring difference is that it is having a lower value for the same pressure ratio. If I take this pressure ratio, you know, this thing, it is having a lower values of the specific thrust, right, than the uh, ideal one. And uh, of course, uh, it is the similar thing if I go for the alpha is equal to 2. And then again, it is having similar trend, only the real cycle analysis will give you the lower specific thrust as compared to the ideal one. So, also for the alpha is equal to 5. We have seen similar trend for the turbo jet engine as well, right. And why it is so? Because you need to have the more mass flow rate for the same thrust, right. 
then only you can get, because losses are more. So, your momentum at the velocity will be lower kind of thing. So, you need to give or uh, allow it to have more uh, kind of mass flow rate to the engine. But whereas, if you look at the thrust, thrust specific fuel consumptions, you will find that you know like uh, in the all three bypass ratios 0 0.5, 2 and 5, this thrust specific fuel consumption is higher than the uh, ideal one. Of course, the train remains same, right? train the remains same in the sense like the thrust specific fuel consumption decreases with the pressure ratio across the compression right and it will be reaching a some minimum value somewhere depending on you will have to find it out it's not very obvious from this figure but however when you look at the data it will be clear right and as i told earlier that because the losses are higher in case of a real cycle and which we have considered. It is not that losses would not be there, but in real cycle we are considering it. So, therefore, it is expected that thrust specific fuel consumption for the same condition, same condition I mean the pressure ratio across compressor, turbine lay temperature, fan pressure ratio, everything remains same. It is having a higher value as compared to the, uh, the uh, what you call ideal one. Right. So, uh, let us look at this propulsive efficiencies if you look at the propulsive efficiency I have plotted over here right? Uh, for the alpha 0.5. If you look at the propulsive efficiency of course, increases a little bit and then it uh, decreases and again it reach a minimum values and then it uh, of course, increases for alpha is equal to 5. But whereas, for alpha is equal to 2 it also it de decreases and also reaches the minimum value then you see. Keep in mind that the propulsive efficiency in case of real cycle is much higher as compared to the ideal one. Ideal one is a dashed line right and because as I told the velocity will be reduced. So, therefore, you know propulsive efficiency will be higher in case of you know, a real cycle analysis and uh, also alpha goes on decreasing you know from 5 to this thing propulsive efficient degree similar trend you are getting. Whereas, for the thermal efficiency you know it is with the alpha it is will be remaining same kind of things and it is what you call it is increasing and then decreasing. And keep in mind that uh, sorry I, I think I did a mistake like uh, this thermal efficiency remains same and I think for the these things and whereas, the overall efficiency if you look at these are overall efficiency it is having similar values alpha is equal to 0 0.5, 2 and, point and 5 kind of thing. So, so let us look at specific thrust uh, for a with the Mach number what happens right. Specific thrust if you look at alpha is equal to 0 0.5 it is having a very higher values at the static thrust which is I mean Mach number 0 and it goes on changing and you keep in mind the slope changes particularly in transonic regimes you know the slope is like this and then it is changing the slope here it is different and here it is different just opposite. So, as the bypass ratio decreases the specific thrust gets decrease. I mean like you know I have not compared with the ideal one, but you can see this is a very interesting thing which we did not do for the ideal cycle right. This we have done for the real cycle and for this we have considered the fan pressure ratio across compressor 24 and uh, sorry fan pressure ratio across fan pressure ratio is 2 and the pressure ratio across compressor is 24 we have considered that is for one case, but you can take for various cases and look at it how it is happening. But if you look at thrust specific fuel consumptions, you see that uh, it is the real cycle is the solid lines, alpha is 0 0.5, it is uh, increases with the Mach number and then you know again it uh, changes the slope and it increases as the Mach number goes you know transition regime higher Mach number it is the slope is very high. That means, at a higher rate the thrust specific fuel consumption increases. And of course, as we 
you know increase this bypass ratio, you see the different trends you can get, right. And it is similar to that of the ideal cycle, but however, ideal cycle is having a lower TSFC, which is obvious as I told that uh, we have not considered the losses. But the changes what is occurring here in this regime, if you look at these are the transition region where the slopes are changing. As we are incurring the more amount of air, you know, then naturally it is expected the transition will be more towards the, where, you know, when the Mach number beyond 1, right, kind of things. So, with this we will stop over and I will take an example in the next class in the turbofan engine and look at it how we can, then we will move to the turboprop engine.